thank you very much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. It's a lovely day in St. John's. Yes, for sure. Um, uh, I'm, I've always been intrigued by the Anne story. Yes. Uh, to what do you attribute its enduring nature? Well, one of the, well, I guess there's two or three things. It's a wonderful story about a young girl who overcome a lot of obstacles and made her way very well for herself. There's, uh, Lucy Maud Montgomery describes the scenery uh, amazingly in the book about uh, Prince Edward Island. So uh, those are the two main things that people seem to want to read. It's books too that uh, grandparents or parents can give to the children and not have to worry they, whether they should be cutting pages out or not. So those are uh, very important things to people still, the content of what their children are reading. Um, as a tourist attraction, however, beyond just the book itself, right. like Anne has become iconic Yes, in a way that I, I, I trying to think of the Atlantic provinces, I can't think of a counterpart. I can't either. I really, there's not, there's very few, I think, in the world that, that has generated so much business from that one book. We uh, do a tremendous amount of uh, retailing with uh, Anne's picture on the books, on dolls, on polyresin product, on ceramic product. It's just uh, an, an, an incredible industry that is going on around Anne of Green Gables. Uh, how big is the industry? Can you give me a, a sense of the dimension? Well, uh, in 1994, uh, Bantam Books, who has been brought by Random, but Bantam Books uh, was uh, the largest book producer in the world at that time. And they said that they had thought they saturated the market with Anna Green Gable books in 1994. And then in 1995, they said they thought they saturated the market again. They were printing so many books. In 1998, they said there's no saturation. They're still printing Anna Green Gable books to this day. So that is just uh, uh, how many books that is going on out there. We uh, sell books, and we may, s I think there may be 45 or 50 different books out there just about Anna Green Gables and about Lucy Maud Montgomery, the author. There's also a stage play? Stage play has been going on for over 45 years, and that's, the, the, I'm not sure whether it's the longest running one in North America or the world, but it's getting close to those. Certainly the longest running one in Canada, I think, in North America. Six, seven, eight thousand seats sold every week during the Yes, tour every season. week yeah, during the tour season, yes, that is going on all the time. They run plays over in Japan, too. They have Anna Green Gables plays going on over there. So it's not only in Prince Edward Island that the Anna Green Gables play is going on. There's an Anna Green Gables play produced in Alberta this summer, just outside of Banff, and that went on all summer. There's Anna Green Gables plays being produced in different parts in the States. High schools produce Anna Green Gables plays all the time. There's even a national park, you know, Green Gables National Park. I'm, I'm trying to think of a of another national park in the country that, you know, is, it, is it's a fictional <laughs> character. <laughs> yes, you know, it is. And, and, are you aware of anything like that? Well, I never much? really thought much about it before, but I, I can't think of any. It, 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 we just grew up with it there, and we just assumed that, well, it was uh, Green Gables uh, National Park. and. Uh, but now that you mention it, I can't think of any other national park in Canada, for sure, that's named after a fictional uh, character. Is there a, another tourist uh, product, to use that word, in Atlantic Canada that compares to Anne? I don't know if any. Uh, I know uh, that people come to Nova Scotia because of uh, Peggy's, well, they want to see Peggy's Cove. And I think they come to Nova Scotia because of the scenery. But I don't know of any other product that brings people from all around the world like Anna Green Gables does. And I and I'm, would say maybe in Canada, uh, there's no product like Anna Green Gables anywhere in any other province in Canada that would bring people to that province for, the, for that particular reason. And you know, like in Newfoundland markets, whales and icebergs. Yes. Uh, New Brunswick, Bay of Fundy and Reversing Falls and I, yeah. you know, yeah. Kind of Acadian culture. Yes. 
don't think anything like Anne. There's nothing like Anne uh, that I know of. And Anne, uh, the demographics of Anne fans is from a very young age to a very old age. And they are, some have lots of money and some have no money. And, uh, but it's their, all, it's their dream to come to Prince Edward Island to see the Anne and Green Gables country. Uh, could you describe your enterprise, the museum, and how, how long you've been involved in it? How many people you employ, and what kind of? Yeah, we started uh, uh, the Anna Green Gables Museum back in 1971. My, uh, I grew up in a house where Lucy Ma Montgomery was married, and uh, people would come uh, when we were trying to put up hay on the farm to talk to my father about Lucy Ma Montgomery and Anna Green Gables. And we used to think, uh, well, why are they bothering us in the middle of the haying season? And, uh, <laughs> and we saw no value in it at that particular time. And uh, uh, we, uh, I had left the firm because it was a small farm, and we either had to get bigger in the farming business or get out of farming. And we had decided, my older brothers and I, we were getting out of the farming business and try to make some real money as quick as we could. So I was out in Alberta working in the oil fields, never planned on returning back to Prince Edward Island. But it was always my father's dream to get into the tourist business. And he passed away at a young age and uh, uh, we had decided we were going to sell the farm because there was nobody left there to look after the farm. But my mother uh, had always wanted to, to get into the tourist business. So sort of as a memory to my father, uh, she persuaded me to uh, come and help her develop into the tourist business. So uh, I thought, okay, so I'll come back and we'll try to get in the tourist business and we'll try to farm. And uh, so after f trying to farm for a short period of time, I realized I wasn't a very good farmer. And it was taking a while to develop into the tourist business because we're off the beaten track. And People were saying at that time, uh, nobody knows who Lucy Ma Montgomery is, and some of her neighbors, and nobody reads Anna Green Gables anymore. And not that I knew any difference, but I thought, well, you know, if I can make some money, uh, then the firm had been in our family since 1776, so it was more of a way to try to save the firm than it was to develop into the tourist business. It was another be a source of revenue for me. So uh, my mother was a school teacher. So she was able to develop the tourist business. And when we opened up the museum, we only had two rooms opened up. And uh, we had a few people that would come each day and sometimes nobody would come. But she just kept persevering and uh, we would open up another room and we'd do a little more marketing. And then uh, in, uh, in the early 80s, the Japanese, when they started to travel all over the world, started to come to Prince Edward Island. And uh, uh, the, they were developing exhibitions over in Japan about Anna Green Gables. And also, they wanted to get married. They wanted to come to Prince Edward Island to get married. And because Lucy Maud Montgomery was married in the parlor of the house that I own, the Anna Green Gables Museum now, uh, we developed a wedding ceremony for the Japanese couples. So they would, we developed it based on Lucy Maud's own marriage. We sing the same song that was sung when Lucy Maud Montgomery was married. The Japanese bride comes down the stairs the same as uh, Lucy Maud did and their, their groom was waiting for them in front of the fireplace in the parlor. So, uh, so we, that started to help our, help our business because the Japanese wanted to come to our property. The Lake of Shining Waters that she writes about in Anna Green Gables is on the farm that I own. So Lucy Mott had said uh, Campbell's Pond known, uh, uh, the body of water known as Campbell's Pond is the pond I had in mind when I described the Lake Shine Waters. So the Japanese wanted to come and see the Lake Shine Waters. So that uh, made it really interesting for us too with the Japanese started to come. And then they developed the movies uh, and it sort of renewed all that interest in Anna Green Gables again. They did a great job of doing the movies. So we had to make a decision back in 1987, uh, my wife and I, whether we would continue on in the tourist business because it was getting too big really for my mother to look after. She was looking after 
mainly by herself when, with me pitching in, but it was growing bigger and we knew it was growing bigger. So we built a tea room and a gift shop in 1988 to help accommodate the motor coach business that was starting to come to our property and to accommodate the Japanese wedding business that was going on. So uh, we, uh, that, uh, in 1988, and then we started our wholesale business based on the product that we were getting over in Japan. And then I started developing my, my own product uh, for the wholesale business to sell to other retailers on Pennsylvania Island. And there actually was a big Anna Green Gables business going on outside of Pennsylvania Island that most people in PI, Pennsylvania Island, did not understand was going on. The Japanese were coming uh, to Banff and they were coming to Niagara Falls and if their holidays wasn't long enough to come to Pennsylvania Island, then they were buying all their Anna Green Gables dolls in, in, in Banff or in Niagara Falls. And Canada seemed to want to develop, and I think Prince Edward Island did too, to make Anne of Green Gables as well known as possible. Canada took control of Anne of Green Gables, and it, they went on to say it's a Canadian story. So people said when they arrived to Vancouver, you can buy your Anna Green Gable product here. It's a Canadian story, not a Prince Edward Island story. So, uh, and then the PBS station. I guess that's okay as long as the doll's made in PEI. <laughs> that's it. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. So we, uh, we didn't know how much uh, uh, product and business was going on outside of uh, Prince Edward Island and Anna Green Gables. When I went to uh, Japan, uh, the person who... Uh, owned, he was uh, listed as the richest man in the world at that time. And he owned a department store in downtown Tokyo where it, it covered seven blocks. And the Anna Green Gables exhibition was the main exhibition in that store at that time. And employees told me that they had never seen this man and he came down personally to uh, uh, him and the Canadian Bash and myself to officially open the exhibition. That's how important Anna Green Gables was to the Japanese over there. So they had developed their whole industry, a whole Anna Green Gables. They even built an Anna Green Gables park in Japan, in northern uh, Japan, that people would go visit. So how many people uh, derive incomes from Ann now in your museum business? Uh, on Prince Edward Island? Yeah. yeah. It's all basically and related, we think. Uh, uh, like when they come to PEI, like golf is important, there's no doubt about that uh, on PEI. And uh, other culture things are important, but everything uh, in is the reason why most people come to Prince Edward Island. It's not maybe so much for the repeat visitor, but for the first time visitor, to the, the main reason for visiting the PEI is Anna Green Gables. So, so you start out to kind of keep the family farm. Yes. Because your mother says, look, there's a future in this. Yes. And at what point did you discover that you're, you're in it? Are you, yes. You're not getting out. Yeah, well, no, that was back in 1988 when we built the tea room. And, uh, but I still wasn't sure uh, how, like, is this going to stop next year? And, uh, and that was one of the things that was always in the back of your mind. How, how is Anna Green Gables? Is it still going to grow? But the, the younger generation, J.K. Rollins, is a fan of Lucy Maud Montgomery. And uh, so it's being reintroduced all the time. The PBS stations and down in the United States, the public broadcasting systems that uh, they pledge Anna Green Gable still to this day to renew memberships. So if you pay your hundred dollars to a PBS station, you can get an Anna Green Gables doll. So so they are buying dolls from me and the Anna Green Gables product to do their pledges down in the United States. So it's still a big business going on in the United States, Anna Green Gables. So are the products you're manufacturing and selling other outside of PEI, is that a bigger part of your business than the museum and the tours coming? Yes, it is, it, it is. And I never really thought it would ever be, but it is. Like we are shipping more product out of Pennsylvania Island than we are selling in Pennsylvania Island. So how many people do you employ now? Well, we got uh, up to 40 people right now uh, working, not all full-time. Of course, tourism is a seasonal business, but uh, 
I did a count last year and it was 40 people. Yeah. So that's kind of amazing from starting from two rooms in our museum to going up to, with the different business that we have and 40 people working for us. Is the Japanese marketplace still a, like a, a critical market for it and? Not as much as it used to be. After the, the economy went bad in, over in uh, Japan, it was really tough for, for the Japanese to come to Prince Edward Island. And of course, the Japanese, yes, of course, the Japanese industry uh, over there is saying don't travel outside of Japan, stay in uh, Japan. So that, uh, so that hurt. One of the things that we come to find out was that uh, uh, they call them OFYs, young office ladies, and uh, they could quit their job, and there were a, a group of young women between age 18, 23, 24, to travel to PI is two days and then travel back to, uh, to Japan is two days. In the Japanese culture at that time, you could get maybe uh, 10 days off a year, but you never get more than three days at a time. So these women would have to quit their jobs to come to PEI. But when the economy was booming in Japan, they could quit the job and go back and get a new job. Now they don't have that freedom anymore. So if they quit the job to come to PEI, they might get a job when they go back. So it's a little tougher. So we lost a lot of that business, and that was big business at that so time. In, back in the 1980s, when you were asking yourself, is this going to last? Right. Is it going to keep going? And you start making investment decisions. Yes. At, at what point did, did it click that, look, it, isn't, it always is, is going to keep going? That, well, if these were good choices you made. Yes. It was really uh, after I got into the wholesale business and I realized uh, that I could start selling product outside of Prince Edward Island. And the PBS stations in the States, who I had no idea, uh, I knew a bit about PBS stations, but I didn't know very much about them. And I didn't know that they used product to pledge. They phoned me just as I was starting to expand the wholesale business and said they wanted to buy some Anna Green Gable dolls from me. And it takes a long time for me to get my dolls in and get them uh, made. And I was protecting my own business uh, on Prince Edward Island, and I couldn't start shipping dolls down to the States. Anyway, I told these people, uh, and, and they started off wanting 200 dolls. And uh, then the order kept increasing and increasing, and I'm getting more uh, calls from other PBS stations, and I said, you know, I need orders here to go ahead to produce these dolls and they said could you give us two days and I said yes so they come back with the orders uh, for the dolls and some of the dolls were being made overseas at that time so we brought in two 40 foot containers just to fill the orders for the PBS stations down in the states and uh, we still send a lot of product down to the states for the PBS stations. So how many dolls do you manufacture in the course of a year? Well, we would, uh, right now, uh, when we started off our wholesale business, we had one doll, and our competition actually, who, which was outside of PI, there was a company in Toronto producing a lot of Anna Green Gable dolls. There was a company in Montreal producing a lot of Anna Green Gable dolls, not even selling them in PI, selling them off PI. A company in Halifax producing Anna Green Gable doll. another company in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, producing Anna Green Gable dolls. So we have one doll for sale, and I remember counting our competition's dolls, and they had 38 different Anna Green Gable dolls for sale. We now have 40 and different Anna Green Gable dolls, different sizes, different faces, different dresses. Uh, and you'll produce how many? In the we would produce right now, we would ship out uh, 25, 30,000 dolls a year. Yes, yeah. How do these other people get the intellectual property rights to produce Ann dolls? Is she, is, it, is she public domain now? The copyright uh, is public domain, but the trademark is not. And the family was able to uh, regather the trademark rights. And it was, nobody was uh, uh, policing the trademark at one time, and you could put Anna Green Gables on whatever that you want. But Lucy Maud Montgomery's grandchildren, uh, a grandson and a granddaughter, 
have taken over the control of the trademark rights. So for me to put Anna Green Gables on a doll or on a box or on a porcelain product, I have to have permission. And it is a license now. So, uh, but the copyright, the printed word has expired in, in 1992, 50 years after her death in 1942. Do you ever call her Lucy? No, well, our family, she didn't like being called Lucy. And uh, our family, uh, she, she was called Maud. That's, that's what she was known as. And my grandfather and her were first cousins, but she was very close to my family. So we, she always insisted that my father and my aunts call her Aunt Maud. And her children call my grandmother Aunt Ellie, even though they weren't really aunts, they were first cousins. So she was always known as Maud Montgomery. And now, uh, and when she wrote, she was L.M. Montgomery because she, uh, women weren't supposed to be authors back then. So she, she, she was known as L.M. Montgomery. Most people refer to her now as Lucy Maud, but she said she disliked the name Lucy. So where does the, where does, where's the future lie with Anne? Is it, have you figured the formula out? Is this it or is there? Is no, other? yes, it's growing all the time. There's going to be a new television version of Fan of Green Gables. Uh, it was announced this summer. And the family is going to redo Anna Green Gables into a TV series again. So I'm sure that's going to renew uh, uh, interest again. I still get all kinds of people coming to uh, our property because of Anna Green Gables. And they're letting their children read or they're reading it to the children. And uh, some people have seen the movies and haven't read the books and they're saying, well, I got to read the books. And some uh, have... Uh, I uh, read the books and, and also the movies. It's just a fascinating uh, uh, thing to, uh, to have people come. And it's all different demographics that come because of Anna Green Gables. I know uh, we, do, we also do Matthew's carriage rides. And I get to do some rides myself in the spring of the year when we're not too busy. And I love going down on the weekends uh, on the farm and I'll do a carriage rides. And I remember I had these two young ladies and they were, uh, one was a lawyer from England and another was a lawyer from Los Angeles. And they had met each other in Australia doing their law degree or doing some practicing on their, uh, on their law in Australia and found out they're both Anna Green Gable fans and both pledged that we're coming to PI together and we'll meet in PI. So they had met on Prince Edward Island, we had the carriage ride. It was their dream, both their dreams to come to Prince Edward Island. This kind of thing happens all the time. We also do not only Japanese weddings, people from all over the world come to get married on our property because Lucy Maud Montgomery was married there also. Uh, when you went to Tokyo and you're in a seven city block <laughs> department yeah. store, uh, did you at that time think one of these days I'm going to China and it's going to be the... Yes. I never thought of China at that time. Uh, like I was just amazed to be in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, I know when we were uh, doing some sightseeing and when we went there, they had a guide with us. My wife and I went there and they had a guide with us. They looked after us the whole time that we were there. And I remember we were sightseeing, window shopping in... Uh, Ginza is the most expensive area in Tokyo, and we went into a Mikimoto store. And Mikimoto uh, was the guy that developed the culture pearl industry, and it was the most expensive pearl industry store in the world. And we were just in there looking. And uh, you're a brave man, take your wife there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and the manager come over up the store to find out why, to talk to our guy why we were there. And uh, the guy tells him why we're there because of Anna Green Gables and he came right over and introduced himself to us through the guy. And he said uh, he's reading Anna Green Gables to his children. Can we come home to his place and meet his children? But our schedule was too tight. And then he wanted to take us down to where they do the culture pearl industry, where they open up the oysters, where they inject the oyster with the sand to make them produce the pearl. But we weren't able to do that. But things like that were happening to us all the time when we were over there. When and in China. In, yes, yeah, yeah. Tourism is often cited as kind of an alternative economy for rural yes. communities in, in, in the Atlantic provinces. 
uh, and the question that what comes up is, is, is tourism going to be the fate or the salvation of rural communities? I have the sense when it comes to Anne, it's, it's all positive. It's all positive from Pensacola, and there's no doubt about that. And it's a big generator. And Anne of Green Gables is spread all over Prince Edward Island. So we have the Anne Play in Charlottetown, we have the, uh, the Green Gables House National Park in Cavendish, and we have my property, uh, which is 15 miles away. So that gets people up in their place. Right across the pond from my place is the Ellen Montgomery Heritage Museum. So that generates uh, economy in that area. On the way from Cavendish to my place, there's the Lucy Mar Montgomery birthplace, where she was actually born. So there's people that is employed there at that property. And then there's uh, one of the schoolhouses, two of the schoolhouses that Lucy Mar Montgomery taught at are open as a museum. So you could go to those uh, places also. And also in the Cavendish area, it's not only the Green Gables House, there's the, the site of Lucy Mar Montgomery's uh, home. So you can visit that site also. And then I'll, uh, like there's a Kindred Spirits Country Inn, and that's named after the book too. So there's a lot of things, and a Wendy Poplar's Cottages, a whole industry there. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting industry, uh, and uh, I have a sense that you're really happy you're part of it. Yes, very, very happy. One of the things I had to stop doing in the industry uh, uh, was that when people find out that Anne was not a real person, it, like you devastate them. So when they asked me, <laughs> when they asked me uh, if Anne, where they could see Anne or Anne's parents or Anne's uh, Matthew and Marilla, I used to think it was a joke at first. And they, it's no joke. Anne is so real to these people that they expect to see Anne when they come to Pennsylvania. And I would say Anne's a fictitious character, and you would just, they, they were just devastated by that. So I dodged <laughs> that question. That's, that, that's, <laughs> the, that's the worst problem that I have in the Anne of Green Gables business. That's not a bad problem. That's not a bad problem at all. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to talk with you. I appreciate your time. Thanks oh, so much. Oh, you're very welcome.